Sutra. Then Ananda and everyone in the Great Assembly heard the first commands as numerous as fun most of dust throughout the ten directions speak to Ananda in unison. Commentary Then Ananda and everyone in the Great Assembly, the Great Bodhisattvas, the Great Ahas, the Great Bishus heard the first commands as numerous as fun most of dust throughout the ten directions. All these people became as one person. Each person was a part of the whole. At the same time, they all heard the first common speak to Ananda in unison. Although there were many mouths, the voice was the same. What they had to say is meant not only for Ananda, but also for you and me and all those present listening to the Sutra. This instruction is a very important section of the Suragama Sutra. It concerns a crucial point, the matter of birth and death. If you understand this section, you can quickly put an end to birth and death. If you don't understand it, you'll have to double your efforts and make progress in your study and practice. Sutra, good indeed, Ananda, you wish to recognize your innate ignorance that causes you to turn on the will. The origin of the knot of birth and death is simply your six sense organs and nothing else. Commentary These words make it absolutely crystal clear. It is stated as plainly as it can be. If we truly understand, understood it now, we would obtain liberation on the spot. If you haven't understood, you have to keep on investigating it. The first commands as numerous as fun most of dust speak to Ananda with different mouths to a single voice, first of all praising him, good indeed, Ananda. They say, like one would to a tried, you are a good boy, very good, very smart. They praise and flatter him first to draw his attention, and once they've got his attention, they tell him the truth. You are very intelligent, Ananda, because you wish to recognize your innate ignorance. You want to know some genuine principle and learn about the ignorance that came with you at birth. It is also referred to as the ignorance which appears with production. It causes you to turn on the wheel of the six paths of rebirth, bobbing up and down, being born here, dying there and then being reborn in yet another place in this life, perhaps a Westerner, in the next life a Chinese, in the next a Japanese, the one after that an Indian, and in the life after that an African. Who sent you out to do this? Who tells someone to become a Japanese? Who tells someone to be a Chinese? Who tells someone to be a Westerner or an Easterner? or a northerner or a southerner, nothing else than your innate ignorance does it. Because there is ignorance, one gives rise to delusion, and upon the arising of delusion, one creates karma. Upon the creation of karma, one must undergo retribution. For instance, in this life, I go to Africa. There are a lot of diamonds there on the Gold Coast. There are more riches than are found in America. It's still not developed, so if I am reborn there and develop it, won't I be wealthy? I'd be one of the world's richest people. From that one false thought, you make a false move and end up in Africa to develop the gold coast and mine diamonds. Those who like America will go there those who like Australia will go there. Those who like Europe will go there. Those who like Asia will go there. It's up to you. Whatever karma you create, you undergo that reward or retribution. You go there to be a person and once you get there, you don't know how it happened. And then you don't know where you are headed next. The dream of riches is over, but you still haven't awakened. It's pitiful, isn't it? The dream of riches never ends, and when the time comes to die, the mind isn't finished, and yet the life is exhausted. 
The origin of the nodes of birth and death is simply your six sense organs and nothing else. The root of birth and death becomes bound into a knot from which you cannot escape. What is it? It is nothing but a trick of your eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind. These six bring about your death and your birth. Did you know that nothing else is responsible but keeps us so upside down, life after life and death after death? It's simply just six sense organs. Why the eyes see defining objects of form and are turned around by then? The ears hear sounds and trace after them. The nose smells fragrances and goes out after them. The tongue tastes flavors and seeks after them. The body is touched and pursues the objects of touch. The mind entertains dramas and races after dramas. Tell me, how many things do you have all together? So many. Following out after the six sense organs, you become divided in, the, in six departments. You're like a business with six different departments, and each takes a little money until the business is bankruptcy, bankrupt. So when you end up dying, bankrupt, closed down, out of business, and with the little capital you have left, you puzzle over where you're going to open another business. Then you go somewhere else and open a new company. And there you are again, doing the same thing over again. Six bosses are in their offices expecting to do good business. But in the end, it doesn't work out and the work stops again. That's where the problem of birth and death comes from. Earlier in the sutra, the Buddha admonished, you only need not follow. You shouldn't follow the discriminating mind. You should not pursue the activities of the six organs, the six objects, and the six consciousnesses. Don't go along with them. Turn around to the shore. The sea of suffering is boundless, but a turn of the head finds the shore. The turn of the head finds the shore of enlightenment. If you don't turn around, then the more confused you get, the deeper you go in. The deeper you go in, the more confused you get. You get into debt to a lot of people and your books are never in balance. Now that you recognize the six organs, you should not mistake a thief for your own son. Don't keep spinning around at the portals of the six organs. Come back, come back to where? To the Buddhist lecture hall. Sutra, you also want to understand unsurpassed body so that you can quickly realize bliss, liberation, tranquility, and wonderful eternity. It too is your six sense organs and nothing else. Commentary, just because before, before this passage, the sutra said that it is the six sense organs that cause you to undergo birth and death, to give rise to a delusion, to create karma, and to undergo retribution. But you should not despise the six sense organs. You can't say, oh, you six things are horrible. I'm going to block out my eyes and pitch them someplace far away. I'm going to cut off my ears and cast them aside as well. And they flop flop off my nose and cut out my tongue. In fact, I'll dismember my body and grind up my bones and be done with the whole thing. I'll shred my heart to peace and scatter it into emptiness and let it return to the great world that way. That attitude is also a mistake. People who cultivate the way can't give rise to hatred. Also, the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind don't treat you well like in business. They are all embezzlers. Still, you don't fire them. Why not? Because although they are not good now, they will help you if you change. If they change and they stop their embezzling, they can help you make a profit. The section of text says that if you become enlightened and obtain permanence, bliss, true self, and purity, it is the six sense organs that bring about bring it about. It is thanks to them for that it happens. 
This is like uh, the analogy of water and ice. Water can be in liquid or solid form. It can be beneficial to people or it can harm them. So you can't lose your temper and say you don't want your eyes and ears. If you don't want your eyes, don't become blind. If you don't want your ears, you go deaf. If you don't want your nose, you turn into some weird thing. If you don't want your tongue, you can't speak. And if you don't want your body, you wouldn't have anything at all. You turn into dull emptiness. No, nor can you do without your mental processes. Thus, the Buddhas of the Ten Directions now say to Ananda, you also want to understand the method for untying the knot, right? Notice that these two sections of the sutra are not spoken by Shakyamuni Buddha alone. It is the Buddhas of the Ten Directions as numerous as find most of dust, limitless and boundless numbers of Buddhas who are speaking now. Very good, Ananda. You are a fine person. You are truly a good cultivator. You also want to know about the unsurpassed body. The body referred to here is the cause for body. It cannot be explained as the body result in this case. The meaning is you also want to bring forth the resolve for unsurpassed body so that you can obtain the body result so that you can quickly realize bliss, liberation, tranquility, and wonderful eternity. I assume that everyone understands what quickly means here, that everyone is eager to become a Buddha as soon as possible. The four virtues of Nibbana are what is meant here. Bliss is the virtue of bliss, while liberation is the virtue of true self. If you have a self, you are not free. If you want to obtain liberation, you have to be without a self. You obtain the true self and are liberated from the false self. Tranquility represents the virtue of purity. Wonderful permanence represents the virtue of permanence. These are the four virtues of Nirvana without residue and E2 is your six sense organs and nothing else. Do you understand now, Ananda? But after the Buddhas of the Ten Directions had spoken this doctrine, Ananda still didn't understand. When you are confused, then no matter how clearly someone may explain to you, you still do not understand it clearly yourself. What's this mean anyway? Birth and death are caused by the six sense organs, but when one becomes liberated and is certified to the fruition, it is also caused by the six sense organs. How can these six organs be responsible for what is bad and for what is good? He doesn't understand, but people can be both good and bad. Today, someone feels good and wants to have people. I want to give to the poor, he says, and he takes out his money and gives it away. But the next day, he is broke and thinks, Yesterday I gave all my money away and today I don't have any to spend. I'll get my gun and go rob someone. So he turns into a bad person. Who was it who did good? It was he. Who was it who did bad things? It was he also. I say to you, then, the one who becomes a ghost is the same one who becomes a Buddha. But for the most part, part Americans don't believe in ghosts. Why do I keep bringing up ghosts even though you don't believe in them? Since I'm not a ghost, I dare talk about them. If you believe in the Buddha, you should also believe that there are ghosts. After all, Buddhas come from ghosts. If you do things well, you become a Buddha. If we don't do things well, you end up a ghost. By the same token, the six sense organs cause your births and deaths. They also bring about your certification to the fruition. If there aren't any ghosts, then there aren't any people either, or any Buddhas. There isn't anything at all, and the world will go to wreck and ruin. People who say they believe in Buddhas, but don't believe that their ghosts are so obstinate that even if the Buddha were in the world, 
he couldn't teach them. The Buddha says very clearly in the sutras that they are ghosts. Why don't you believe that they exist? Other religions talk about ghosts and spirits. You argue, but you can't choose to believe that there are no ghosts and spirits just because another religion says that there are. The reason that other religions discuss them is that, in fact, they exist. Just because you don't believe in a certain religion doesn't mean you can reject what is true in its doctrines, such as the existence of ghosts and spirits. Such people may think themselves smart, but they are witless, willless. Not only do they completely fail to understand Buddhist doctrine, they don't even understand human existence. Pity form. Sutra Ananda heard the sounds of Dharma, but he did not yet understand in his mind. Bowing his head, he said to the Buddha, How can what causes me to revolve in the cycle of birth and death and what enables me to gain bliss and wonderful infinity be the six sense organs in both cases and nothing else? Commentary Ananda heard Shakyamuni Buddha and the first come ones of the ten directions as number verses find most of dust, speaking with different mouths but in a single voice, saying that the source of birth and death is the six sense organs and that the bliss and permanence of the nirvana of Buddha is also brought about by the six sense organs and nothing else. But Ananda didn't understand. Ananda heard the sounds of drama. He listened to the subtle, wonderful, inconceivable sounds of drama, but he did not yet understand in his mind. And since he didn't understand, therefore, bowing his head, he said to the Buddha, he bowed from the west to the Buddha. How can what causes me to revolve in the cycle of birth and death spinning again and again on the wheel of rebirth and what enables me to gain bliss and wonderful eternity is to art that I have, um, these two that Ananda mentions include liberation and tranquility as well. Be the six sense organs in both cases and nothing else, I don't understand this principle. Sutra, the Buddha said to Ananda, the sense organs and the objects are of the same source. The bonds and the relays are not two. The nature of the consciousness is, is empty and false. It is like a strange flowers in space. Commentary, the Buddha said to Ananda, the sense organs and the objects are, the, are of the same source. The six sense organs, the six sense objects, the six sense consciousnesses come from the same source. If there weren't six organs, there wouldn't be six objects. And if there weren't six objects, there wouldn't be six consciousnesses. The three are one, the one of is three. The bonds and the relays are not two. Bonds refers to the knots, relays refers to they are untying. These two are non dual. There's no fundamental difference between them. The bonds are the release. The release is the bonds. When you don't understand, they are knots. When you understand, it is liberation. The knot is release. It depends on your own ability. The nature of the consciousness is, is empty and false. The nature of the six consciousnesses has no substance. Or appearance. It is like a strange flowers in, in space. Do you remember the person with the eye disease? His staring caused fatigue and the appearance of strange flowers in space. The six organs, six objects, and six consciousnesses are just like the strange flowers in space. They're completely unreal in themselves. You comes to them and so does evil. In the same way, one person can be both good and evil. Although good and evil are different words, they refer to the same person. Sutra, 
Ananda sense awareness arises because of the sense objects. The appearance of objects exists because of the sense organs. The appearance of the perception, both devoid of a nature, support each other like intertwining reeds. Commentary Ananda sense awareness arises because of the sense objects. A discriminating knowing and perception arise due to the six sense objects. The appearance of objects exists because of the sense organs. The appearance of the six sense objects arises due to the six sense organs. The appearance and the perception both evolved of a nature support each other like intertwining weeds. Perception here refers to the sense awareness first mentioned. Neither the appearance nor the awareness has an inherent self-nature. The appearance arises only because the six sense organs match with the six sense objects. It is therefore not real. It is empty and false. The perception is also empty and false. They support each other like intertwining reeds. The reeds referred to here have a common root from which the two reeds grow. They will only stand if there are two. One by itself will fall down the six organs, six objects, and six consciousnesses are the same way. The organs and objects must work together to bring about the six consciousness consciousnesses. One alone will not stand. To further the analogy, the reeds are hollow so that there appears to be something substantial to them when one looks at them, but they are ultimately empty inside that represents the empty falseness of the six organs and objects. Sutra, therefore, you know, you now based your knowledge on awareness and perception, but that is a fundamental ignorance. The absence of a view regarding awareness and perception is nirvana. The pure, the true purity of no outflows. How could there be anything else in the midst of it? Commentary. Therefore, you now base your knowledge on awareness and perception. You set up another awareness, awareness and perception based on an awareness and perception that are in themselves wrong. But that is fundamental ignorance. The absence of a view regarding awareness and perception is nirvana. You realize that your awareness and perception are basically non-existent, and so you establish no opinion based on them. To have no awareness and perception in the midst of awareness and perception is to be in a god with way. It is nirvana and the true purity of no outflows. How could there be anything else in the midst of it? In the midst of the absence of awareness and, and perception, how could you harbor anything else? That place is pure at its origin and pervades the Dharma realm. Why would you want to add anything to it? Why add awareness and perception to awareness and perception? This principle is like the one in the passage above that states basic enlightenment is necessarily bright, but is falsely referred to as bright enlightenment. <laughs>